So let me ask both of you, you're running for political office. How are these, how are you going to take who you are right now, um, the, the obstacles you've overcome, uh, the things that you've learned in the course of your life, how are you going to integrate these things in public office in the future? Well, um, I would say first we need to look at um, the local level of everything. Mm -hmm. I'm big about local up, and mm -hmm. for so long we've come from a federal level down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that uh, to implement these things that we that we're speaking about and seeing the change, it all begins with us really um, having that platform. And as I mentioned about my story, when when you have a larger platform, uh, I remember when I first started <laughs> started the church. It was like five of us, and that was myself <laughs> and my four cousins. Uh -huh. And but we were happy because we we knew that this is what we were supposed to be doing. Right. Um, you know, I would put meetings together, such as events like this. Yeah. And would have like, you know, fifteen, twenty people. And yeah. And I was going to hundreds of people, or you connected this person. And I believe that as you as you humble yourself as you grow and mm -hmm. move up mm -hmm. you have larger platforms to develop larger plans yeah. and that's what i believe uh, um, running for congress is allowing me to do is yeah. creating larger platforms not for me to be seen mm -hmm. or necessarily heard mm -hmm. in a light of being famous or recognized right. on a tv screen right. but right. so that everything and i Kim Clayson said this. Uh, she mentioned and said that if you're around stars, you shine too. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, yeah. that's the shining light. Yeah. Every place that we go, we become a light of some kind to someone. They're watching you, yeah. you're watching them. Yeah. And I believe that's how we're going to really change what's taken, how we take our message, because it hasn't been done before. Anyone can get up and give. I can right now go through a whole political spiel. Yeah. We, we know it. You know, we, we know the numbers and the statistics we know what to say what not to say yeah but at the end of the day people are real yeah and they need to be real relevant and relational yeah and that's what we're missing in congress and that's how i believe we're going to be able to carry the message we're going to spearhead a movement and we're not going to stop until we see the division the good division which is separating the wheat from the tear right and start putting people that are actually standing for people representation yeah. and not dictatorship yeah yeah wonderful same thing willie or do you want, I, I mean alex do you want to add anything different to I, that? I, I concur very much so with what willie's saying okay i think it's important to understand anybody can write a policy yeah about fill in the blank yeah but to actually be getting your hands dirty yeah to experience and to walk alongside these individuals to walk alongside the local community yeah we're, we're, we're integrated in right we're, yeah. we're cohesive right yeah yeah to see that to speak to these people to talk to these people and, and experience life as they see it from their eyes yeah as a congressman the as much as given much as expected right right so i, I think running for congress for me is as willie said it gives it gives you a larger platform to give more. Yeah. So my cup overflows. So what? I can pour into other people. Yeah. Not so I can let it run all over like a Democrat. Yeah. And just make a mess out of things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a firm believer in giving back more because the more God gives, it's an abundance. I can't yeah. hold it myself. Yeah. So I think that's what this position that I'm seeking is going to do. It's going yeah. to allow me to continue to pour into my community, right. pour into those that are coming up, and pour into those that are, you know, looking for a, men a mentor. Yeah. It's a gift that keeps giving, right? That's yeah. how it's supposed to be. One last question I want to ask you, and then you can add anything else that you want. Um, Alex, yesterday I heard you talking with people and you kept on talking about accountability, accountability, accountability. So maybe you could describe a little bit more what you mean. How, how do you become accountable to other people, to your constituents? Because you see a lot of times people go into the House or the Senate and all of a sudden they're not really accountable. They're kind of like the God figure. You know, you need to pay attention to me. Uh, they're not there. You talk about almost like the model of servant leadership or something. Um, but how do you, what structures will you put in place to make sure that you're accountable, you know, personally, because we all have to be accountable personally as well, but also to your constituents, also to making sure that you're doing the right things and, and that you're the voice for your constituents. How, how Talk a little bit about that whole idea of accountability. Yeah, so as you mentioned, because mm -hmm. I love the word accountability, mm -hmm. I feel like it's a foreign word. It's almost like a swear word. People don't use it because no one wants it. Mm -hmm. No one likes to have somebody that's older or younger say, amen, or a, a, a miss, 
Yeah. This is not how we conduct ourselves. Right. This is not what you're here to do. Yeah. So I think it, a lot of it comes, as Willie said, mm -hmm. humility. Mm -hmm. A real man, a real woman, a real person who wants to grow mm -hmm. is going to accept that, that positive criticism, that positive feedback. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not growing, you're what? You're dying. Yeah. So that accountability comes from you telling yourself internally, I know there are things that I, I need to refine and sharpen. Right. And I know there's somebody who's wiser, not just older, because mm -hmm. age, the, the, you can't differentiate between right. age, right? Because right. wisdom is comes in all shapes and sizes. Right. Right. So you have to understand that there are going to be people that are young and older that see things in you that maybe need a little fine tuning. Yeah. And as a leader, yeah. Whether you're leading from the rear or leading from the front, you have to understand that there's going to be people that pull you aside and yeah. say, "Hey, man." I'm just letting you know, and even if they're a person you wouldn't expect it to come from, those are the people you really yeah. want to listen to. Right, right. Anything you want to add to that, Willie? No, I think it's great. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> I mean, it, it is, but I mean, I, I'm going to tell you for myself, just meeting you two and a lot of the other people here at CPAC, I mean, look, at when I hear you talk about these things, I learn, you know, and I think that's great because we can be always be teaching each other. And I'm a little bit older than 33, Willie. But I mean, so here, here, here I am, you know, I'm learning from people that are younger from me. I can say, you know what, hey, they've gave me some mentorship right here. And I think it's so important to have the humility to say, this person can mentor me, and the same thing with you, that others can mentor you. Um, love everything that you're doing. Um, it's just, uh, I, I was so glad that you came up to me the other day in the cafe. So I was wearing, because you know, the black life just matters. You yeah. know, the whole idea. What, what I've done is I put on the shirt, it's called Every Black Life Matters. I like it. So, and because the, this and what I tell people is when I wear it, um, this is the Christian version. Black Lives Matters was the communist version. It was the, the, the communist front thing. Because what did they talk about? They're talking about racial equality, supposedly, but they're talking about get rid of the, get rid of the nuclear family because that's racist. And yet that's the best environment to grow up in. And, and they talked about all of these other things, like what is going on here? But every black life matters with Kevin McGarry and, and, uh, and he's got another friend out there, but they started this thing. It's basically to say from the womb, First off, every black life matters because every black life has to live. If you don't make it out the womb, that's it. You know, every black life has to have uh, the ability to have school choice. And every black life should have a father in the home. Every, you know, black, uh, there should be um, income mobility. But what I also like too, it's not just every black life matters, it's every Latino life matters, every Hispanic, every white life matters, every life matters, every girl life matters, every boy life matters. and. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're coming into office and you have the Christian framework like that, that every single life matters and that you have the ability to do good versus the ability to create havoc in the name of your movement and destruction. Um, you know, I just, I love you guys. I thank you so much for coming thank up you. to me. Yeah, and uh, yes, if there's anything else you want to add, just feel free to do so other than that. No, I just thank you for the opportunity and um, I, I just say uh, visit TeamWilly.com for more information on the campaign. TeamWilly.com TeamWilly.com and I say always remember there's three people in your life, your peers, your mentors, and your mentees. Okay, wonderful. Anything you want to add? How do, we, how do people follow you? Uh, Alex Stovall okay. on Twitter and then Alex Stovall on Facebook. I've got a team who's diligently working right now to finalize some details on my campaign site. Okay. As soon as that gets up, if you follow me on Facebook, you guys will be the first to know. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank God you. bless you. And man, go in there and rock the country for her. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much.